Hello, people. I am Javi Kowe, joined by Sintel Kowe. What's good? And we're continuing on with Family Man. This is Season 1, Episode 8, Act of War. Loving the show so far and very much looking forward to this one. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see a cut-down version of this uh, as we can't show more than 10 minutes of the show for copyright claim reasons. It just won't end up on YouTube at all if it's beyond 10 minutes. And if you're watching this on Patreon, you'll get the whole thing uncut, but we can't show you the Amazon video. You'll have to open that in a separate window, and it's like you're watching it along with us with your two favorite pals from the internet. We got some snacks here, so we're, we're, we're grubbing every now and then. Don't mind that, please. Uh, hopefully that offends nobody. <laughs> Just got to sustain ourselves through the rest of the show. And one thing I want to say real quick before I forget is I love the overall... I, I kept talking about Manoj Bajpayee's acting, mm -hmm. but like the overall acting style I like a lot. It's very grounded, mm. and I just want to call that out before I forget, because I keep forgetting to mention it, how much I, I appreciate it. It's not all over the place. It's very simple in a way, but yeah. it feels real because of that. Yes. Anyway, excited. Let's continue on here. Hi, Bruce. Hey, Shrikant. Been a while. How you been? Okay, Bruce, I have someone you've been desperately looking for. I'm all ears. Farzan Ahmad. <laughs> I have a sack number and his location where he's hiding. You sure it's Faison? Absolutely. You have his exact location? Not yet. But we'll get it. But I need a favor from you in return. What favor? I want to have a chat with him in person. I don't know how we're going to achieve that. I mean, assuming we do nab him, I'm not going to be able to bring him to India. Well, if the mountain doesn't come to Muhammad. Hmm. All right. What's the plan? He could be hiding in any one of these, tracking all these houses as we speak, leaving visuals onto the screens. We've got tactical units and striking distance at all these locations. You copy? How are things going on your end? Well, uh, using the voice sample from the conversation of Sajid with Fazan, we managed to put together his voice profile. Hello? Assalamu alaikum, my guy. Wa alaikum salam, Sajid. Sab khairiyat? Ye number kahan se mila? Hello? Hello? Focus, guys. Hello? 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 Hello, 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 you, uh, have you peeped like at the very end of this little sequence? He's got the grocery bag and the gun coming yeah. out of it. I just love that. <laughs> I wasn't a fan of the white actors. They were they were like serviceable. Wow, mom, very cool. Pesa kabhi aise tayar ke office nahi. Okay, listen. I have an important conference ke liye Lunaula ja rahi. Papa saare thoda time lagega. Okay. Sir, please. Mujhe Fazan ko interrogate karna hai. We have time, 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 this is my only chance. This is my only chance to get my guilty. My guilt is killing me. I don't have to worry about it. It's not my gut feeling, sir. It's going to happen to me. I don't have to worry about it. Is it okay? Yes. This is interesting. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you so much. Oh. Sorry, are they? There's a split screen. You know what? I feel... No, but are they sharing a room? Because Nikhil now sometimes tends to get a little too yeah, technical. You're more natural and you can do it charmingly. Charming? I'm flattered here, yeah. thank you. <laughs> what I mean is tum baato ko ghuma ke achche se manipulate karte ho. Wow. What a backhanded compliment. Yeah, the shirt off and just walked in there. They're sharing a room. Oh, a business <laughs> trip. So <laughs> kaha ye hai ki aapka naam Fahed Ahmed hai. Fahed Ahmed. Karachi is your business partner. We 
और बिजनेस के सिलसिले में हम कोयटा जा रहे हैं आप बोलो शेर साहब में कितने सालों से करीब करीब सत्रह साल से सत्रह साल वैसे तो पटियाला से हूँ जसमीत सिंह सोचा था दो एक साल में वापस चला जाऊंगा पर फिर एक और साल एक और साल करके सत्रह साल निकल गए <laughs> अब तो बस कोयटे का मुस्तफा बन के रह गया हूँ आपको घर की याद नहीं आती अपना शहर अपनी फैमिली फैमिली तो यही है मेरी बीवी मेरे बच्चे कुछ साल पहले माँ और बाजी का देहांत हो गया था लेकिन तब भी जा नहीं पाया देश के लिए कुर्बानी देना हर किसी के बस की बात नहीं पाजी किसी से कोई शिकायत भी नहीं अब तो यही अपना घर है आ ये बात अलग है कि डर अपने घर में भी लगा रहता है किसी रोज अपनी असबियत सामने आ गई तो उठा के बेचेंगे और कुत्ते की मौत मारेंगे हेलो माँ हाँ तुम लोगों ने खाना खाया आ, नहीं हम बस जा ही रहे हैं क्या अभी जा रहे हैं नीलम आंटी वेट करी होगी जाओ ना जल्दी अच्छा अब मुझे आने में थोड़ा लेट हो जाएगा अगर तुम लोग चाहो तो आज आज नीलम आंटी के साथ ही सो जाओ नहीं नहीं हम यही सोएंगे माँ आपको टाइम लगेगा हाँ बेटा लग तो रहा है थोड़ा टाइम लगेगा बट आई प्रोमिस आई बी बैक ठीक है ओके टू मनी वे फाइन What? What? Sid's birthday party. She just said I'm coming. She can leave her brother at home. Mm-hmm. I'm getting sleep. This is so bad. Mm-hmm. He's not asleep. Mm-hmm. It's home alone. Macaulay Culkin time. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna turn turn the video game on loud? I wonder if someone's gonna try to pull some like. Way too, way too mature stunt with her, and she's gonna be like, you know what, no, and then leave. Ah, I'm guessing she gets loaded. Subha jaldi niklenge. Bache utne se pehle pahunchenge. Oh, remember he knows where the gun is. I remember when he was trying to put his gun up real quick, and then he walked in and saw where he, saw where his dad put the gun in the top drawer. Don't tell me that, man. Yep, go and get the gun. ब्रदर Oh, he's jumping around with it too. Dude, this is making me so uncomfortable. He's going to shoot her. Oh, he pointed it at his face. He found it. He found the safety. Dude, that's Papa? that's too much for me. Oh Papa? man, dude, that scene was too much for me. <sighs> that made me really uncomfortable. Uh-huh. Oh no, they're in the same and they're in the same uh hotel room. Yeah, they're in the same room. That's why you see it on the sofa. Oh lord. Oh lord. They did it. They did it. Hello. 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 Come, 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 come,
So I'm guessing, and I may be wrong, when he was picked up from the phone call, wherever the country was that he was in, he picked him up, but they were supposed to transfer, transfer them over to the US. They instead robbed him with their own setup, but they had to do it off the books. Gotta give them right to the Americans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. Boss Sal Bale, you came in now, Gaska stop. Lashke the bag hot like Yatas. Just about me, I signed out Yalia. Over the few years now, Gaska Pura has stopped. On a dear, dear Kirke, border parse, Kashmir may smuggle Kia. Original plan yet has her. Kimusa Rasif India who sang it. Asif Kashmir say, now Gaska Pura stop, Billy Laker Aiga. Oh, gas attack in Delhi. What a disaster. Yes, sir. Nerve gas attack means an act of war. But this government support is not possible, sir. Which means the inter government will have to go to war in Pakistan. Sir, I think we should involve the government of Pakistan. We have to work together. If this mission is successful, then this will be disastrous for both the countries. Good job, Srikant. Yeah. Good job, Srikant. Thank you, sir. I got a little redemption there. Yeah. Yeah, he got all of it. He got all of it back. <laughs> How many episodes total is it? I think 10. Oh, okay, because this shit usually hits the fan the second to last episode. Yeah, penultimate. Episode 9 is penultimate, and then we have one more. Oh, man. It's gonna get ugly. That was pretty slick, the way he handled all that, man. The way he orchestrated that with the American CIA, apprehending the guy and then, like, tricking him to lure out all that information. That was cool. <laughs> and they just... He, he played into his weaknesses. <laughs> gave him right to the American. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, yeah, right thanks, around buddy. the corner. <laughs> that was slick. He got his redemption though, man. That that makes me feel good. His wife could have possibly uh It looks like lost guilt her credibility, it, maybe? It, it looks like it look they look guilty. They deliberately don't show you what has happened yet, which I like. Yeah. Because she wanted to do something is what counts. Mm -hmm. So whether she did something or not, she had the feeling of the desire it's brewing in there that's why she texted him i mean they're sharing a hotel room she's walking in he's got his shirt off there's just all kinds of you know questionable things going on what's going on yeah right? you know, the thing that messed me up though more than anything was the kid playing with the gun yes that's just not right. It was making me almost throw up. I felt nauseous during that scene. We deal with this story all the time. I don't know what the sensitivity level of that is like for an Indian watching this. Right. But because we deal with these stories on the daily, it's so close to home. Like It feels like it just very well could have happened. And in a lot of the stories that are in our culture regarding it, yeah. it's just an innocent kid doing the exact same thing, just playing around, find daddy's gun. This is a much simpler situation than stories I've heard. Like I heard of a story where this kid got into the gun safe, assembled it, and shot his brother. What? That's crazy, right? Like that's next level crazy. There's another story about a kid in Walmart who shot his mom. He took the gun out of the purse. Yeah. It was so real, it was making me nauseous. Yeah. Like literally, it was making me physically kind of ill. I didn't want to see the kid kill himself or his sister. We're not out of the woods with that yet because it's still on the sofa. Well, he might've put it back before they went to bed. There's a lot that could have happened in the they evening. They didn't even clean up the apartment, much less put a gun up. Well, it may come back. Well, we will see. Yeah, we'll, we see. we'll see. Everything at the party went the way I predicted and yes, I don't I don't mind that at all. Yeah. It went like I wanted her to get out of there. She's been building up a better character ever since she saw uh, dude show up and she's been on like on the defense about him mm -hmm. I like that they're continuing to build her character in a stronger way where she she turned down that thing would she have gone through with taking the drug and finished partying 
had her own mother revealed that she is not the saint that she appears to be. I don't think so. I think she's a good kid. Yeah, but good kids do dumb stuff. I don't think she would have taken the drugs. She doesn't strike me as someone who was going to go to that level. I knew when dude made the approach to try to kiss her, she was going to reject it. Yeah. It developed her to be, to have good character like that. Well, she's almost like a second mom. Maybe you're right. Maybe she would have rebelled had parents been home and mm -hmm. she had a wholesome life with a norm, a norm, relatively normal family situation. Mm -hmm. Maybe the parents stepping out did force her to step up her game yeah. and become more of an adult and treat herself accordingly. There's merit to what you're saying. I anticipate that she would just be a good kid, but mm. like, I'm not sure. That was cool. Yeah. How'd you feel about the conversation in the car on the way to the checkpoint with the informant, our hero and the informant, and he's saying that, you know. He lived there for 17 years. Yeah, and now a place that you would think is like the enemy lands, which it is, is home for him now. And how he's like all bought in and the simple fact that he's such a high risk that he already knows the type of demise he's going to have if his cover is blown. Yeah, that's a that's a great point because there's a movie I watched called Razi with a, an actress named Ali Abbott where she's playing someone who gets married to the enemy. She's on enemy ground. She's in Pakistan as an informant for India. It can mess with you and then you can easily see why it would mess with you because that is now your home and family. Yeah. And you're continuing to supply information back home, but like, but this is where you've been. Mm. Your brain is not wired to enter into an enemy tribe to feed your home tribe. You're not wired that way. And so when you continue to spend time that way, it's setting up the neural pathways in your brain to go, this is what is comfortable. Yeah, this you know? is my home. This is exactly. Yeah. I wasn't even thinking that deep on it, the way you're talking about mm -hmm. it. I was thinking of it more as... Man, time fucking flies. Wow. <laughs> you know? Like you're just well, in this one spot for years and you're like, wow, like that's a, and you can see how that happens. Like people move to LA all the time and right. then just don't leave. They settle somewhere. You know, it's just inconvenient to go, to think about having to move somewhere. Is it possible to think that our hero could interpret that as if he stays in the game long enough? that this will be home. The struggle between fighting good and evil and India versus Pakistan and terrorists and all that, all of this, all this madness that is his profession, is that going to become home? I think it is already home. Mm. Like you said earlier, this is family. I don't think there's a question about that at all. He has this thing compelling him all the time, mm -hmm. despite the lack of appreciation he was having in previous episodes. Right. It's like, it didn't matter that his family didn't appreciate him, that his work didn't appreciate him. He was still going like a train. He kept throwing that coal in the fire. Yeah. If we can make that correlation between the informant, well, the, the, yo, the informant in the car saying that he's home now, and if he's discovered, he will be torn to pieces. Can we make that correlation with our hero saying that he is home now, now that he's not from his first family, his blood family, mm -hmm. but with his career family, if he is exposed as not being true to his family, that he will be torn apart? I don't understand the question. So is his job going to kill him? Like actually kill him? Or even can be interpreted as torn apart, as tearing apart his other family. Oh, I mean, it already is doing that. Yeah. And I think that is the inevitable outcome. I think at the end, he will have a strong victory yeah. in his career, yeah. but he's going to lose a lot at home. Okay. I think that's the inevitability because him and his wife are going to get divorced. It yeah. looks like that's already the because Whether or not, she did something is almost irrelevant. Yeah. What matters is that she's in the position to do something because her marriage life is miserable. That's ultimately what matters from that. I feel like, yeah, they're gonna split. You gotta take some L's while you win. Yeah. You sacrifice this over here to win this over here, and that's what life's about, man. Yeah. You yeah. can't have it all. I was thinking, because I was like, man, is he gonna be torn apart in this episode? Is this where it happens? Because they gave that speech. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then... We have the, I don't know if his wife is going to do this. And then we have the gun that could potentially kill his son. And then we have the party and the daughter and all this. I'm like, is he about to be torn apart? Because to me, that entire scene of the two of them in the car, to me, it felt like they're talking about destiny. This undercover is like his soothsayer. He's like, it's that moment, that Shakespearean moment where you meet the person that's about to tell you your fate. I'm probably reading way too deep into it. That moment in the car, because they're in no man's land. They're in the desert. There's nothing else around. It's right. just him and this man. 
having this deep conversation on their way to do some seriously dangerous shit. Right. I think there is an abundance of philosophy and meaning to extract from the show. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's necessarily that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do think that, you know, your instinct to extract, like, this level of information from the show has merit because it's giving you stuff. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you got that at all, this goes back to, like, art is up to the eye of the interpreter, right? It's right. in the eye of the beholder. So the fact that you got it means that it's there for you. That scene with the kid, dude, that really yeah. Mess me yeah, up. That's traumatic shit right there. <laughs> mm. oh, oh. oh, and then when it's like, and you see him hit the safety, right? Yeah. And then immediately he turns the gun, and he's like trying to see like where the bullet is at. But here's the thing too, like I was thinking, cause like well, he's playing with the gun, cause he's pushing all the buttons, and then he hits the release to the clip, and the clip drops out. And I was wondering, it hit my head, and I was like, man, I wonder if the average viewer thinks that he's safe now because the clip isn't in the gun. Because I know there's still one in the chamber. I think the writers know that as well. Okay, because I was like, man, I think they're going to try and give us the illusion of safety because the clip isn't there, and I think he's going to, like, kill his sister or something. But they didn't go that route. Yeah. But they show set it up to make you look in that direction like... I want you to pay attention to how fucked up we're about to get. The only thing that has bothered me about the show so far is two things. Okay. Is some of the green screen is quite obvious, especially mm. when they're in the car. It's like, this looks like green screen. Mm. And there's like something about the motion of the traffic passing by. And when the dude that got off, the old dude that got off in the bus was just like driving like this. And okay. like, no one fucking drives like that. <laughs> like, that always irks me. And then the second thing that bugged me was the silencer pistols. It's like silencers don't sound like that. They no. need to stop doing that in movies. I would have thought this show would have demonstrated what a silencer actually sounds like because it's going through extreme lengths to show us realism. Yes, I agree. That's a really tough myth to debunk. The word about the falseness of the silence pew, pew, of yeah. pistols. It's just one of those things. It's so ingrained that you're going to hear that sound. Right. <laughs> Movies have, have completely corrupted that idea in our brain. Like the whole scene in John Wick 2 mm -hmm. when Keanu and Common are shooting at each other in the uh -huh. train station and no one can hear a thing. Yeah. I'm like, that's just not how that works. <laughs> you're dealing with some Harry Potter level shit <laughs> if you can't hear it. You know? <laughs> That's what makes me so mad about it. It's not a silencer with respect to it being quiet. It's a silencer as in it silences your location. Mm. That's what that does. Nevertheless, I'm loving the show and I love what's happened here so far. It went in ways that I wasn't necessarily expecting because I was like, how are they going to pull this off? I, I, they, they left enough mystery there that like I wasn't exactly clear on what the game plan was. And I liked that because right. I was having to catch up. The show doesn't leave me that far behind. There have been shows where I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. Whereas this does a good enough job of putting the carrot just like one or two feet in front of my face. Right. So I'm like, oh, okay, I got it. Like, and then, 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 you know, they feed it to me. It's very tactically wonderful. I think they do a really good job of fan service. Now, I don't know how authentic the jargon is because I'm not affiliated with a secret organization, mm -hmm. but it sounds legit. And they say it in such a way that if I concentrate really, really hard and try and get, and get all the pieces and the places together, I can maybe get a, some kind of semblance of it and mm -hmm. then it gives me the reprieve and then it says things in plain terms. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think they're aware, mm -hmm. but I think because they're living in that world of realism, they have to have the jargon. They'll have a character say something plainly that'll explain the 10 minute conversation that just went down of yeah. how the plan is gonna go down. They'll be like, oh yeah, they're just gonna go around the corner and shoot this guy. Oh, that's what all that was mean, because a perfect example, and I still haven't gotten everything together, was the meeting with the prime minister and all of the uh, his cabinet and all that. Some of the names and the places that they were dropping. That entire scene to me might as well have just been like I didn't soak none of that in even though I really tried. And they still haven't really explained that yet. The stuff with the P Pakistani cabinet? Yeah, I mean, I got the stuff with the American CIA uh -huh. in the conversation and they was like, you remember that job that they did in Russia? Yeah. And they did the same thing. They had all the jargon. And I was like, okay, I don't really get that. I didn't even get the liaison either for a second. I yeah. was like, okay, so why is this liaison needed for here? But some character will come in and say something or you'll see an action that's just plain as day that doesn't have to be explained because you can see what's happening and see how it's kind of unfolding. And then you can go back and remember that conversation and be like, Oh, that's what they were talking about. I still have no idea what's going on with the meeting of the of the Pakistani government and the, and the whole So cabinet. Okay, so here's what's up. I mean, at least from the outside looking in, the military is known to be in control of the Pakistani government. Okay. And the PM doesn't really have 
all that much power. He's more of a figurehead, almost like the Queen of England, which is not supposed to be the case. Right. But the military is so strong in Pakistan that they essentially control the government. Mm. Pakistan does have a bad reputation for certain things, for like harboring terrorists. And so Pakistan's always trying to fix its reputation. Mm -hmm. And then shit's always happening. Terrorists are constantly coming out of that. And it wasn't that long ago that they're right near the border of Kashmir that it was like a, a IDE on a bus mm -hmm. full of Indian soldiers. And allegedly it was a, a soldier from Pakistan, uh, a Pakistani harbored uh, terrorist group. The theory, at least from the outside looking in, is that these terrorist groups are not just allowed to be there. It's almost like it's engineered by factions or just the entirety of the Pakistani army. But that scene is sort of giving us a different look at it of them going we don't want this image right. we don't want it to look like this we no. we're trying to clean this up as much as we can mm -hmm. and so we need to deal with this as as fast as possible mm. like they were right under our noses and we didn't know that this is a bad look that's my understanding did i help at all no 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 th that did i was like like i said i was trying to i would get bits and pieces yeah but i just couldn't put them all so together so i could see the full picture i just got bits but that, that cleared it up a lot more it's almost the same conversation that our hero and his love interest had when she's like listen we're just trying to make sure that the body count is low and we got all these different factions coming in and some may be right, some may be wrong, but we're just trying to keep people safe. I kind of can see the parallel now with what you were saying regarding the Pakistani cabinet and all of the uh, the generals and everything. Yeah. It's pretty similar to what- Manoj Bajpayee, yes, that Manoj, actor? Yes. Yeah. Well, his girlfriend that- Ex-girlfriend, was saying about on a micro level of them protecting the town even though there's different factions and groups that are running amok. They're just trying to keep people safe even though they may not know. Oh right, in Kashmir. Right, yeah. so it's just like a, on, on a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. So they, they're pretty much saying the same thing. Thank you thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, man. That, the whole the Kashmir situation is just like wrought with all kinds of messy, messy issues and it's going on even right now. Mm. Like not that long ago, Kashmir was completely shut down by the Indian government, basically blacked out internet wise. Mm. I'm not gonna go into the nitty gritty of all that because I only have a cursory understanding of it. And it goes back all the way to the partition of India. And it's just been a conflict for the longest time. And it doesn't look like it's gonna get solved anytime soon. And so that's why you've got Pakistan occupied Kashmir and then India's, side, and there's like the line of conflict that runs through it mm. and both sides like staunchly believe that Kashmir belongs to them. There's haziness and disagreement about how exactly India acquired Kashmir because there was supposed to be an agreement. Like, I read this on Wikipedia a while ago. It's something weird like, Kashmir used to be its own independent state or something like that, its own independent area. Like, it had a whole little... I'm gonna use the wrong terminology probably, but like, its own, it was own, its own kingdom, essentially. Mm -hmm. And when the partition happened, the king or whoever of Kashmir was like, okay, if India does this, we belong to India. It was something like that. If that agreement was actually fulfilled is unclear. That's why there's like, this part is clearly on India's side and this mm. part is occupied by Pakistan. It's, it's fuzzy and I could easily say something that will upset any viewer mm -hmm. because I've misunderstood it. So mm -hmm. we'll stop at that. Okay. Yeah. Right. You're on the same page now with, yeah. with regards to all that. Oh yeah. It's tough because from the outside looking in, it would seem to me that Pakistan is nothing short of a, a complete disaster. <laughs> Because I've seen footage, at least as far as Vice has mm -hmm. illustrated, and Vice is not perfect. Vice has, has given out misinformation sometimes, which is very frustrating. But they've shown footage of like driving through Pakistan, and they go, that's a terrorist group, that's a terrorist group. And you can just see it, and that's where they're training. And mm. it's like, this is clearly condoned mm. by the Pakistani government, according to that news source. Okay. But if when you talk to people from Pakistan who have messaged me directly, they're like, the media that you guys are hearing, that India's hearing, is biased and catering to you guys, mm -hmm. but you're not hearing our media. The situation is not exactly what your media is painting. I'm like, yeah, but that's your media. Mm. catering to you and so how do you know you're getting accurate information uh. I, I I'm all for questioning my media I don't know what's accurate because I'm not there witnessing it with my own eyes and even if I'm there I'm not seeing all the levels of everything happening and who's informing what it's so complicated I elect to stay out of the conversation I can and, understand and, that. and only engage it for the purposes of entertainment right because I am woefully ignorant about all of that I'm going to interpret this as its own source of entertainment yeah and only talk about it within those realms because like you said if you don't know all of the all of the ins and outs then yeah you know um, just, just see what's 
what's what's here on this screen yeah like pm narendra modi uh recently got re-elected my understanding is and i could be wrong part of why he got re-elected was because he made a very uh ballsy move i think it was an id the, the bus blew up with all the soldiers on it and there was this immediate assumption or immediate conclusion that it was a pakistani harbored terrorist that did that mm. right pm narendra modi was like enough's enough we're gonna go into pakistan and we're gonna like strike down this terrorist group. And as far as the Indian media saw, there was a number of terrorists that were wiped out. But as far as the Pakistani news told its people, mm -hmm. there was no one there. No one actually knows what happened, mm. except for whoever was near there. But because he made that move, he got reelected. It happened to be right around reelection. Or at least it helped his re-election. And so there's conspiracy theories around that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to dive into it or say if I stand anywhere. Because I, I don't have a dog in that fight. Yeah, I you understand know? that, yeah. Um, this is just me like kind of regurgitating what I've seen and heard. Right. At the time, the, the Prime Minister of... Uh, what's his name? Imran Khan, I think is his name. Uh, I can't remember the PM's uh, name of, of Pakistan. He kept putting out information going, oh, come on, Narendra Modi, we should work together, blah, 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 blah. The go two governments don't necessarily want to work together is what it looks like from the outside. Mm -hmm. So when they were talking about in the show of like, we need to work with Pakistan, I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. that chance of that <laughs> fucking happening. I, like, at least as far as the news is, con is concerned, right. it looks like it, it, they never work together. The one nice thing was that uh, when India attacked that supposed base in Pakistan, right. one of the soldiers, Indian soldiers, uh, the pilots, had to eject or something like that mm -hmm. on enemy ground. Oh, and he ended up getting beaten up by some locals. The Pakistani army took him and protected him, fed him, treated him well, supposedly, mm -hmm. and then returned him to India as a uh, olive branch, as a sign of good faith and you know goodwill. So that's one of the few instances where you're seeing like Pakistani and India kind of working together yeah. and being like, hey, can we be cool? Yeah. But, hmm. I, okay. you know, anyway, it's so deep, dude. Like. Everything I've said is just like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of everything that's been going on there. Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully that helped a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have just enough to be entertained by this. Right. Hopefully that wasn't boring for you guys. Um, probably, I'm sure there's going to be a shit ton of comments of people going, <laughs> people this is what you don't understand. This, right. What I hope you guys understand as well in advance is like I have to be objective when I'm reading the information and read between the lines of like, who is speaking strictly from patriotism mm -hmm. and favor and bias, mm -hmm. and who is speaking from a place of being objective and, mm -hmm. and just like really looking at the facts? Mm -hmm. Who knows truly what are the facts? Right. But anyways, uh, this has been fun, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed some of that. Uh, please, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon so you get notified every time we drop another video. Check out our other reactions, reviews, short films, vlogs, and interviews, and make sure you follow Sintel on the Instagram, on the Twitters, and hit him up. Let him know how you feel about him, how much you love him. <laughs> and uh, if you're watching this on the Patreon, uh, thank you so much for supporting us and uh, and continuing to be part of this uh, little Koya family. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. I'm Jabby Koya. This is... It's your boy, Sintel. Peace out.